Hello and welcome to Flash, well, animation class, Flash, Chapter 2, or excuse me, Chapter 3, Lesson 2, Working with Libraries. And we've already kind of worked with it a little bit. This is the car race. And you'll notice the very first thing I did is I opened uh, FL3 underscore 2 dot FLA. And I've already saved it as car race dot FLA when I did this in a previous um, version, uh, let's say. So, now you'll notice mine, for whatever reason, mine is, okay, there we go. Mine was set in such a way where you couldn't see the, um, you couldn't see the actual uh, timeline. And then I just went down there and clicked it on. So, here's what the car race looks like. And on FL, or Flash 3-12, it talks about hiding and showing layers. Um, it talks about sorting things. So basically what's going on here is we kind of dealt with this before. This is hiding all the layers. This is showing all the layers. This is hiding that particular, or locking that layer. This is hiding that layer, showing that layer. Hiding, showing. Locking, or unlocking, locking. So we kind of go back and forth between those things. And I want to go ahead and display the library, and you'll notice as I look at the library, and this is kind of as it appears in figure 13, when you click on the name, it'll actually sort them according to the alphabet. Now, it doesn't tell you why it did this, it, but do you see where it says B underscore reset? All the items that it named as graphics here, it named it as a B, standing for button. So when you go to um, when you go to alphabetize this, it'll actually alphabetize all your Bs together, so all your button things will be alphabetized together. You notice G underscore is for all the graphics. As a result, when I alphabetize it, all the graphics items alphabetize together. It's something they did, but they didn't really tell you about. Now, on Flash 3-13, they talk about having you create a folder called Graphics in another folder called Button. What's going on here? I think I can just right-click and do a new folder, or I can use my new folder icon, which is located right there. Either way that you want to do it. I'm going to do the right-click, new folder, and I'm going to call this Graphics. Now, the point behind this is, if you've ever taken any web page design or things along those lines, organization of your elements or organization of your tools or resources is very important. So this is a graphics folder. Lo and behold, we're going to put graphics stuff in it. So if I actually grab the G title, right? Now if I click on this, it gives me my title. And if I should actually grab this and I drag it down to graphics, it goes away. You'll notice I have the expandable button there. So now I can actually click on that, expand it, and see G title. And then if I do right click, new folder, and I'm going to call this button, right? Button, button, who's got the button? And then here's my button. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my reset button and I'm going to put it here. It allows me to kind of organize these things. And of course, I can collapse and expand and things along these lines. So I can ideally also take all the rest of my graphics items, which is all of this through here, and I could click it on graphics. So now I've got buttons and graphics. Now they also want you on page 3-14 uh, to delete the border graphic. So I click my border. That's what the border graphic looks like. You notice I believe the border graphic is slotted right here up at the very top. And if I come on, I can hit my delete key there. I believe I can also right click and delete, whatever the case may be. So I'm getting rid of the G border. So I'm deleting that. And as soon as I delete that from here, you'll notice also it deletes from my stage over here. Right? So now I've gotten rid of the item I wanted. Now, I want to load up my coolcar.fla. Now, from where I'm doing this, I don't believe I have my coolcar.fla, but let me see if I can find, if I didn't save it to my uh, data files here. Let me see here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I want to go to my desktop, and then I want to do new animation, and I don't have that, and I actually my data files were gone. Okay, so no big deal. 
we can make this work. So the idea behind the data files is as it appears on page figure 17. If I had a cool car graphic saved in a different library, like I could do the down drop arrow. Let me see if I can just load one. Um, I'm going to load FL3 underscore just so I can play with it. There we go. And I believe FL2. If I if I loaded FL3 underscore 3 and I had a graphic here, what I could do is I could actually click on the graphic in the library, drag it to FL2 underscore or the FL2 stage, and I would then be able to modify it appropriate. I'd then be able to actually use it in FL2. So if I had the graphic right here that represents a library, and it, uh, as we appear on figure 17, do you see where it says G underscore car? What they actually do is they take that graphic and they move it from there over to the stage here, and then it'll actually appear within the libraries here. So I'm going to do it the reverse so you can kind of see what that looks like. So I have my libraries for FL3 underscore 2 open. I'm going, to, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to open this up again so I can see it. I'm going to grab my GCAR2 and I'm going to move it over here on the FL3 underscore 3. Now FL3 underscore 3, I move my graphic here. Now if I come along in here in the title bar and I change this to my FL3 underscore 3, I now have GCAR2 as part of the library items associated with FL, the other file. I mean, I could read this to you, but the other file. So that's how that kind of works. So I'm allowed to bring it back and forth. And even if I went so far as to delete this car, it would still exist as a library item in the new file. So once again, this is what I did. I pulled up this. I made sure I could see what's going on here. I know which one I want, right? Here's the one I want, or I want this one, or whatever. I'm going to do GCAR1. Then I pull up my new file, whatever that is, where it's open. Now you'll notice in its library files, it is not present. I come up here to the, the library panel, and I choose the old file. It then displays the one I want which is GCAR1. I then grab that and I just simply drag it right over there. As I grab it and drag it over there, now what happens if I switch this to my other files libraries, you'll notice that I've now transferred that library from one to the other. And even if I come along and I grab this graphic and I delete it, it's still part of that library. Which as I look at Flash 3-14 and 3-15, that is the main point between that. And that allows you to change those files back and forth. So ideally, kind of, we call it a library and we're like, oh, it's a library, blah, blah, blah. But what does this mean? The overarching idea is, is if I created a library file, I would actually call it maybe Sebastian Library or something like that. I could pack it full with all these graphics that I use on a regular basis. I can even go so far as to call it library file uh, cars, or you know, if I wanted those specific ones. But I could come along in here, and I could insert different graphics at different keyframes, renaming that layer according to those graphics that are displayed. And then if I know I want some sort of graphics in a new stage, I could then have, a, a, here's a great example. I'm going through, this is my library file for whatever reason. If I have these two items there, I look at which one I want, I figure out which graphic it is over here, and then I go to the file over here, and then I use it appropriately. So it gives me a continuity of graphics in a library that I can use over and over again. Now. I think this uh, particular section does a great job of letting you understand these are the tools of why I got to use it. But the overall implications is if I was doing this on a regular basis, if I was working for a company, if I was working for someone along those lines, this would allow me to get stock photos. This would allow me to get my logo. And everything would always be the same way because what I modify in the library, I can then use in whatever items that I want to create later on. So, 
I hope that this helps you with chapter three, lesson uh, two, specifically working with library files. And if you have any further questions for me, let me know. But otherwise, thank you very much for your time.